skyscrapers collapsed. Pools pouring off high rises. The most important thing is, you know, how to rescue those people. Now the race to rescue survivors after a deadly earthquake in Southeast Asia. Plus, we'll introduce you to Bay Area car buyers rushing to dealerships before the auto tariffs kick in. I didn't want to take the chance. And meet a curator who's realizing his dream of opening a food hall in the East Bay. The members of the community that live here deserve this. Cheers. From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. Thanks for being with us this Friday. I'm Ann Magavik, and we are beginning this afternoon in Southeast Asia. That is where rescuers are searching right now for survivors after last night's devastating 7.7 magnitude earthquake centered in Myanmar. That quake caused this 34-story building in neighboring Bangkok, Thailand to collapse, trapping dozens of construction workers under that rubble. Take a look. Rooftop pools on high rises turning into waterfalls, showing just how powerful this earthquake was. Here's the very latest. We know that more than 150 people have been killed in the earthquake and its aftershocks. That number will likely rise. One of the aftershocks measured a magnitude 6.4. Hundreds of people were hurt. A number of buildings, bridges, and other structures have collapsed. A state of emergency has been declared in both Myanmar and Thailand. But the epicenter was near the city of Mandalay in Myanmar, felt hundreds of miles across Southeast Asia. Right now, crews in both countries are searching under the rubble for bodies and survivors. Tina Kraus has the latest. Rescue teams in Thailand used headlamps and their bare hands to comb through this collapsed building in Bangkok into the night. The 30-story skyscraper that was under construction barreled to the ground Friday after a powerful 7.7 magnitude earthquake rattled the region. The most important thing is, you know, how to rescue those people. It's a great tragedy. At this high-rise hotel, water from a rooftop pool gushed over the sides as the building shook. American Deborah Poonmache was relaxing in her Bangkok home at the time. I was in my Lazy Boy and all of a sudden it moved back and forth and then it toppled over and I hit my head on the table. <laughs> The quake was centered across the border in Myanmar, near the country's second largest city, Mandalay, reducing mosques and other structures to rubble. People at this airport ran for cover as portions of the ceiling came down. This video shows what was left after a bridge standing for 90 years crumbled into the river. Amid the devastation, Myanmar's military regime made a rare appeal for international assistance. The United Nations system is mobilizing to help those in need. Both Myanmar and Thailand have declared states of emergency as residents deal with the disaster and brace for potential aftershocks. And President Trump says that the U.S. will help with the rescue and recovery efforts in that region. But uh, Darren Peck has a little bit more information on exactly how this was so destructive. And it sounds like because it was shallow. Yeah, shallow. And the particular type of fault we're going to look at in a second. You only get about 12 earthquakes a year across the entire globe, and that are this strong in the sevens. This is a 7.7. Now, if this was a little stronger to magnitude 8, we only get one of those a year. But we get 12 of these. It sounds like a lot. Most of them happen in unpopulated areas, so we don't hear about it. But this one happened in a very populated area. Let me put a little bit of context on this. I'll give you a little bit of detail on what to expect next. The USGS here actually has a product where they can forecast the probability of aftershocks. Now, Ann already told us that there's already been a magnitude 6 aftershock from this earthquake. And you can see there's a 40% chance of that occurring. But let's not rule out the fact, even though it's low, You've got a 6% chance you could still have a 7. And then, of course, you've got almost certainty that over time, they're still going to be experiencing 5s, 4s, and 3s. That will linger likely into the next month in terms of how often those happen. But in terms of the type of fault this happened on, if we take a look, if we take a look at the earthquake in terms of what it looked like on the ground, that is the shaking intensity. And notice how it's going along a straight line like that? That's the earthquake fault. And when you get a straight line like that, right away you can pick out 
This was a transverse fault, strike slip, just like the San Andreas. Notice what happened, a long line where the worst intensity was right along the fault. Take a look at a comparison. That's what it looked like when the San Andreas went. You got a long line, the worst of the shaking stretches for hundreds of miles along the fault. For comparison, Northridge, that was not on the San Andreas. That was a thrust fault. You get a much more localized shaking. So just some nuances of comparisons to how our earthquakes compared to that one. I'll be back with our forecast for rain coming up in just a bit, Ann. Back to you.